So the lovely team over at Wargamer recently asked me if I wanted to take part in their latest campaign, and that is printing something off for somebody else. And I figured, you know what, I'm sure I can think of somebody that I vaguely like that I could print something off for. So they very kindly sent me over a couple of bottles of their Wargamer resin to print some bits off, and I chose these Napoleonic files. And you might be wondering why Napoleonic stuff, considering that you always do just like fantasy or sci-fi or just other random bits. And we'll get onto that in a moment. So this isn't a sponsored video, they just kindly sent me over this resin to take part in their campaign, so just pop that out there. But if you've not seen my previous video about Wargamer resin, it is really nice, flexible resin that works perfectly when it comes to things like your fancy miniatures or just miniatures in general. You don't have to worry about snappages or breakages. It's nice and flexible, you can drop it, you can bang it, you can bend it, you can do all of those things. And chances are it won't break. I mean, it might still break because the laws of physics do still exist, but it's a really lovely resin to work with. So I printed off some Napoleonic figures. And basically, the reason I wanted to print these off in Wargamer is because even though they say they're 28 millimeter scale, Napoleonics always feel really tiny in comparison to anything else that I've ever painted and stuff like that. And my dad is a massive painter when it comes to Napoleonics. He does so many things. And the reason why I chose him for this project is A, it means I get to play around with a resin for something so small and tiny and fiddly and potentially gonna break if he drops it and stuff like that. But most importantly, he's the person who got me into painting in the first place. Now I mentioned he adores Napoleonic stuff here. So I printed him off this carriage with the cannon and the riders and the horses. And I've also printed off other stuff for him with the Wargamer resin as well in the past. I've printed off all of these horse riders and I'm not gonna try and get the names right because I'll try and I'll get them wrong and the Napoleonic fans will kill me in the comments. So I'm not gonna. But I printed off loads of stuff from the Wargamer resin for him in the past and he absolutely loves this. So I printed off this carriage with all the horses, gave it to him and let him get it assembled and do all of his stuff. Now my dad isn't a fast painter. He very much believes in going perfect every single time. So it's taken him about three weeks to go through all of this and I have some B-roll footage of the different bits there for you on screen. But as I mentioned, he's the person who got me into painting in the first place. I still remember just before starting high school, we'd gone out and we'd discovered Warhammer. One of my friends had it and I had no idea what this was and I'd seen it and I'd always been intrigued by miniatures and painting because my dad had done it from such a young age but I could never quite get to that standard or figure it out. I'd always tinkered, but never really got into it. So he took me to the Games Workshop store as they were known at the time, and I picked up my first box of Space Marines. And I remember that evening so vividly of us both just sat there painting and him showing me how to do all the basic bits on my Space Marines, which of course were Ultramarines. And I'll have a few of those up on screen. These are like, not my original ones. I have no idea where my original ones went, I think they might have got killed off at some point, but the ones that my dad painted for me really stuck with me. You know, we all have our starting points when it comes to painting and something that got us into it, whether or not that's a friend or a family member or just a colleague or whatever, something tends to spark that inside of you that makes you go out and go, I wanna collect these tiny little toys. I wanna to put paint on them and I wanna spend an astronomical amount of money on collecting these things and the paints that go with it. There's something there that triggers that downward spiral in addiction. And in this case, that was my dad. He very much got me into that and he showed me so many of those early methods. And who better to tell you about their painting journey than my dad himself? So what was it that got you into miniature painting back in the day? When I was younger, like all children of my age group, it was a natural thing to do because that was what was available at that particular time. There were no computer games. There was very limited television. So it was either do something like paint airfix products, put aeroplanes together, that kind of thing, or there was nothing else. I suppose you've seen things change a lot. So, you know, what's the difference now between how it was when you first got into the hobby? Like, you, obviously, you started off with like metals and plastics, and now you're using things like 3D printed resin. You know, what's the difference there, and what do you think of that? It's a massive, absolutely incredible change. If you look back to the 70s, which is about when I seriously became a bit of a modeler, you had Airfix and Humbrol, and they had all the Waterloo and Napoleonics, which I particularly like, and they were just the basic plastic molded figures on a sprue. Now, 
they've gone to things like Perry Miniatures, Warlord Games, Victrex, which produce some excellent figures, plastic and metal, and uh, the detail on them is fantastic. The historical accuracy as well is something that's extremely important. And on the old Airfix ones, they were okay, but they weren't 100% accurate. Whereas now, they really are good. And when you then move on to things like the files that you can buy, where you can then print the product yourself, they're just amazing. They, they now have completely changed the concept of modeling, in my opinion. And uh, I can't find myself going back to any other product except for those that print. So I'm interested as well just to find out what was it like trying to teach me how to paint back in the past and I suppose by extension my brother as well? It was interesting because what we had was we had all the other factors that influenced children as I was a, a young father trying to bring my own children up in a modern age. So you had your your playstations and you had the television programs and you had all the other things that were tempting to draw children away from the traditional um, pastimes that people like myself used to enjoy. So I tried and I tried very hard and I actually diversified to Warhammer only because that's what my son, particularly Sean, enjoyed. So I had to then start painting something that I didn't like and didn't really enjoy. But if I painted it, then what I was hoping was that if I painted it to a decent standard and I impressed him, he would follow and he would do it. And fortunately, that is exactly what he did. And I'm very proud of that. And a quick bonus question. How does it feel to have a son who paints better than you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's debatable. He is good, he's very good, but his style is so different to mine. I, I often joke and we have a bit of fun about um, how he paints and the shading and the speed paints that he uses and the various techniques that he uses compared to I go for accuracy. But my accuracy takes so much time, it's just madness. Whereas he can produce something very quickly I can't. For example, one, one uh, Scots Grey soldier there will take me two or three days, whereas he'll do it in two or three hours. And um, that's great because on the tabletop, it works. But I don't like them just for the tabletop. I want them to be perfect. And that's why they're brilliant because they are perfect. When you look you look at the back, you look at the buckles, and it's got every detail of the buckle. It's got the holes on the straps that you can just dot them with the black so that it shows the definition. It's got the cap badge. It's got the rosette on the French shakos, and it's got the red, white, and blue in a tiny, tiny little spot. You can see on this one, this is one that I'm doing at the moment, and you can see the red, white, and blue on that rosette and that look at the scale it's tiny but the problem with that is it then really tests your own modeling skills and uh, it can be frustrating so another area where we both differ i guess is that you do a lot of research into your stuff so to make it historically accurate you know how what does that process look like and what do you use for that well that's another important factor with the futuristic it's really it's not easy but it's it's a lot a lot less difficult i would say to be able to use whatever color scheme you want and you can play about with it and if you make a bit of a mistake sometimes that mistake can actually enhance the figure whereas with napoleonics you've got to get the accuracy and the color right so you've got to research it you've got to look at the reference material and some of the stuff i use for example, this, this is brilliant. And uh, it's a book that came out that has all the military uniforms for the French and the accruements. So it covers things like 
the um, the muskets, the sabers, the swords. It covers everything, and uh, you then get the exact item that 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 regiment or that particular soldier should be carrying. But in addition, the absolute right colour. And then for the British, you've got to use a different source. No, I I will be painting these figures until the day that I can't hold a paintbrush or my eyes don't work and um, I thoroughly enjoy it. I've heard this saying about golf widows. Well, my wife is a modeling widow and uh, it's not because I'm on the catwalk. So this was a really fun project for me, which I was not really involved in because for me it was just a case of getting these models into my slicer, then onto my printer using the Wargamer resin, cleaning them all up and then giving them to my dad. I didn't have to do any painting, which is good, but let me go down memory lane and just relive some of those early memories and the stuff that got me into painting. And it's something that's inspired me now to go off and do more for the people that I know and I suppose the youngsters out there. So stay tuned in the future because I have recently, you might notice my hair is greyer, over the summer started doing some classes for some of the kids that I know. So my son is six years old, my daughter is four years old, and they've got friends and they, when they come into this space, when they come over and they see all the miniatures, they've all been hooked and captivated by all the stuff. And pretty much every single one of them said, can I make something like that? Or can I paint something like that? And foolishly, because I was going down this nostalgia lane, I said, yes, let me teach you. So I've done my first class for the kids and I'll be doing some videos on that and some of the tips and stuff that I've learned from that, which one of them is don't have children. But <laughs> that aside, there's so many things that you can give back to kids. And the thing that's made me incredibly happy about doing that is seeing the expression on their faces when they've painted up their first models and they've taken them home and then I've been sent pictures by the parents. They're, they've made their own little shelf for their models. And every single one of them said, oh, can we do this as like a weekly thing? We'll do more classes in the future, but they want to do it and they want to get into wargaming. And it's this project itself that's made me want to do that because it reminded me so much of how my dad persevered to help me get into it. And clearly had so much patience because he was buying these models from Games Workshop, which we all know aren't cheap. And I would have been there going, oh, which is kind of how I paint now, actually. Um, and getting all the paint all over the place was he's doing this perfectionist bit and going, I wish my son would just paint in the lines. So he had so much patience. And it reminded me that if he hadn't have done that with me and shown me the models and the techniques and how to paint and just been patient with me, I wouldn't be here today. Well, I'd be here today, hopefully, but I wouldn't be on the camera now and I wouldn't be painting and I wouldn't be doing anything with miniatures because I just wouldn't have. So I don't want to give that back and hopefully I can inspire at least a couple of those kids and youngsters out there who are coming around now and enjoying that painting stage, remain patient with them and show them some of the stuff and then get them into gaming. And yeah, fingers crossed, it becomes a bit of a legacy. So rant and rambling over. Thank you so much to Wargamer for sending this version over. It's a really fun idea about sending this out to creators and about how can you give back to somebody else, you know, whether or not that's a friend, if it's a family member, if that's, you know, the local kids. Can you do anything for a youth club or something like that? It's a really fun project. And honestly, it's really rewarding as well, seeing that light in somebody's eyes as they kind of realize, oh, actually, painting isn't as hard as you expect it to be. You see some of these models and go, I'll never be able to get there. But you won't be able to get there if you never try or nobody teaches you. Hopefully that's where we can give back. So thanks so much. And if you've got any questions or any comments, throw them down below. I know it's a bit of a random video, but yeah, Wargamer sent me the challenge. Here it is. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. And stay tuned for the uh, teaching kids to paint because, oh boy, it's actually easier than I expected, the teaching stage of it. It was the dealing with children. That's harder. <laughs> so stay tuned and I will see you in the next one. Bye.